He was a loyal soldier, decorated and dedicated to Yugoslavia. But ultimately, Ratko Mladic became known for something else, mass murder. He's now facing a verdict on 11 counts of war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. The charges are from the Bosnian War of 1992 to 1995. It will indeed be an important decision to uh, see if the judges will follow us in relation to the two counts of genocide uh, in relation to Srebrenica, where of course we have already a number of convictions in the past, and in relation to the municipalities where until now uh, there has been no, no convictions. Prosecutors contend Mladic committed genocide not only in Srebrenica, but in six other Bosnian districts. He's pleaded not guilty in a case that has taken more than two decades, from arrest warrant, detention, trial, to verdict. You know, in the first years after Mladic was, was indicted, he was indicted in 95, well, during a few years after that, he was not hiding at all. He was um, driving around, getting standing ovations in football stadiums, and uh, there was no one uh, really seriously looking to arrest him. After the war, Mladic moved to Serbia. There, he was protected by a vast criminal network. We arrested some of them, but the most wanted ones were hard to find. Now, as I recall, I can tell where the main obstruction stemmed from. They came precisely from the state authorities. The executive branch actually protected them. And that's why it took so long. It's obvious that nobody can uh, hide and, uh, you know, uh, without, uh, without uh, I mean, for 16 years and stay in the country without uh, support of, of, uh, st of the state. Mladic went underground when Serbian President Slobodan Milosevic fell from power in 2000. He was finally arrested in a small village in northern Serbia 11 years later, a shadow of the man who became known as the Butcher of the Balkans. No matter how deep the conspiracy was to hide Ratko Mladic for all of those years, in 2011 he ended up here at the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. And it will be the tribunal and not his supporters who ultimately decide his fate. Soraya Leni, TRT World, The Hague.